In this video, we're going to be discussing the sinuses within the cranial cavity. They're also called cranial sinuses or dural venous sinuses. And what they are is they're collection points that are going to be used to ultimately return venous blood from the brain directly to the internal jugular vein and then ultimately to the right atrium of the heart. And the venous blood that's in these dural sinuses is derived from cerebrospinal fluid. So recall that cerebrospinal fluid is a fluid derived from blood that circulates in the brain in the subarachnoid space. So in this picture right here, this is the subarachnoid space. It's a space between the arachnoid mater, which is this layer, and the pia mater, which is directly on the surface of the brain. And you have cerebrospinal fluid that's circulating in here. Well, cerebrospinal fluid needs to be recirculated back to the venous system where it can go back to the heart, and then that blood can go ultimately to the lungs, be reoxygenated and replenished and all that good stuff, right? Now, the subarachnoid space has structures like this one called arachnoid granulations. These are structures that jut from the subarachnoid space through the dura mater, and they pierce into these spaces, which are actually the cranial sinuses. The one shown here specifically is the superior sagittal sinus. And what these arachnoid granulations allow is they allow cerebrospinal fluid to move from the subarachnoid space into the sinus right here. And those sinuses will then carry the remnants of that fluid, which is basically venous blood, ultimately back to the internal jugular vein, and then that'll take it ultimately back to the right atrium of the heart. Okay? So these sinuses are a way to clear that cerebrospinal fluid from the subarachnoid space of the brain because that fluid can't just stay there. Okay? It's going to constantly be uh, having wastes added to it and nutrients depleted from it, so we have to continuously replace it. And this is a way that we can get that cerebrospinal fluid out of the brain and bring it back into the venous circulation. Okay? And it's through these sinuses. So what we're going to do here is we're going to identify the major sinuses and we're going to show how they connect with one another to ultimately return blood to the internal jugular vein, which will then take blood back to the right atrium of the heart indirectly. So I just showed you this image. Here's the superior sagittal sinus. Let's actually blow this out a little bit and move to this picture. What we're looking at right here is a frontal view of the cranium and the brain. So basically, they just cut the brain into a front and back half, anterior and posterior half. And what you see here is just what appears to be a really small space. Okay? But you have to imagine this sinus is not only going into the screen away from you, it's also coming out of the screen toward you. And so if you imagine that rotating this view 90 degrees, you would basically get this. Okay. So the coronal section was maybe taken like right here, but rotating at 90 degrees, you can now see all of the superior sagittal sinus. Okay. And so this right here is the superior sagittal sinus. It's going to drain venous blood from the anterior part of the brain along the longitudinal fissure, ultimately to the posterior part of the brain. And as you can see right here, the superior sagittal sinus is going to drain into this structure, which is the transverse sinus. If we follow the transverse sinus around, we can see that it loops around here. Here's the midpoint of the transverse sinus, and then it loops around on the other side. So it's one structure, but it does have a right half over here, and it has a left half over here. So this is your transverse sinus. Okay? The transverse sinus is going to drain into the sigmoid sinus, as shown right here. So there are two sigmoid sinuses. This one is the left sigmoid sinus, and then here's the right sigmoid sinus. Okay? So anything that goes into the transverse sinus is then going to go into the sigmoid sinus. And that's what I tried to show right here. So yes, the superior sagittal sinus drains into the transverse sinus, but anything in the transverse sinus drains into the sigmoid sinus. And you can see the left sigmoid sinus and right one right here. Now, it's not shown here, but these two sinuses would drain into their respective internal jugular veins. So right beneath this one, this is the left sigmoid sinus, it would drain inferiorly into the left internal jugular vein, the right sigmoid sinus over here would drain into the right internal jugular vein. And then from here we call the order of events. The internal jugular vein drains into the subclavian vein, which then drains into the brachiocephalic vein, which then drains into the superior vena cava, and then ultimately back to the right atrium of the heart. Okay.
So make sure you understand the sigmoid sinus and then this transverse sinus. Most of the other structures here are going to drain into the transverse sinus. So we need to understand that. Let's first look at this picture right here. So the superior sagittal sinus is right here. Again, now we're looking at a cross section or a transverse view. Okay? So now we're just seeing one little part of the superior sagittal sinus. And if you follow this inferiorly, you can see that it would drain into the transverse sinus. Here's the right half of the transverse sinus. And then here's the left half of the transverse sinus right here. Okay. There's your transverse sinus. And then this would be a sigmoid sinus right here. So here's a sigmoid sinus, the left sigmoid sinus. And then this is the right sigmoid sinus. Okay. The next one we're going to look at is the inferior sagittal sinus. This one is also going to be in the longitudinal fissure of the brain, but you can see the inferior sagittal sinus is a lot smaller than its superior counterpart. Okay? But in the same manner, the inferior sagittal sinus is going to drain from the anterior part posteriorly, and then it's going to move a little bit inferiorly, and it's going to drain into this one right here, which is the straight sinus. I'll zoom in a little bit so we can see that better. So here's the inferior sagittal sinus. This right here is the straight sinus. Notice that the straight sinus drains into the transverse sinus. And also notice that it's draining into the transverse sinus at approximately the same place that the superior sagittal sinus is draining into the transverse sinus. We'll come back in a few minutes and talk about the significance of that. That's your straight sinus. So again, zooming back out, the inferior sagittal sinus drains into the straight sinus which then drains into the transverse sinus. And again, anything that drains into that transverse sinus goes into the corresponding sigmoid sinuses and then to the corresponding internal jugular veins. There's another sinus right here that can actually drain the occipital part of the brain, and that's the occipital sinus. The occipital sinus, notice, can drain also into the transverse sinus. Okay? So there are three structures that all drain into this common point on the transverse sinus, and those are the occipital sinus, which drains in inferiorly. There's the straight sinus, which drains in from the anterior position, or it's moving posteriorly. And then there's the superior sagittal sinus, which drains in from the superior position. And that point where all three of those drain into the transverse sinus is called the confluence of sinuses. That's one name for it. And those three sinuses all drain into the transverse sinus at that point. Okay, So hopefully that makes sense to you. Now we have a couple of other sinuses here on the anterior inferior part of the brain. And those are the cavernous sinuses. They almost kind of look like lobster claws on the anterior surface. But those are the cavernous sinuses. There's a left and a right. And each one of them has two sinuses that they can drain into. For example, this is our left cavernous sinus. It has a left superior petrosal sinus, and it has a left inferior petrosal sinus, and the right one has right counterparts as well. So if we look at this, notice that the superior petrosal sinus drains into the transverse sinus. Okay? But notice that it's draining into the transverse sinus at a point more distal from the confluence of sinuses. So I tried to put that right here. Superior petrosal sinus is draining into the transverse sinus, but it's doing so not at the confluence of sinuses. It's doing it much more distally. Then the inferior petrosal sinus drains into the sigmoid sinus, as you can see right here. But either way, if it's the inferior petrosal sinus, it goes directly to the sigmoid sinus. Superior petrosal sinus goes to the transverse sinus and indirectly to the sigmoid sinus. Either way, they make it to the internal jugular vein. Okay, So hopefully that makes sense to you. Let's take a look at this view right here and see a little bit more. Uh, first of all, here is a cavernous sinus. This is the left cavernous sinus. The right one would be over here. And you can see here that the cavernous sinus has a superior petrosal sinus you can see that draining into the transverse sinus more distally. And then it also has an inferior petrosal sinus that's draining more or less into the uh, sigmoid sinus. Some sources will actually have this inferior petrosal sinus draining into the internal jugular vein, not the sigmoid sinus. But either way, they're both going to make their way toward the internal jugular vein. Okay. One other thing to actually notice about this 
is that the occipital sinus not only can drain into the confluence of sinuses, but notice that it can also drain into the sigmoid sinuses. Notice the occipital sinus has a couple of branches right here, and it can actually drain into the sigmoid sinuses on either side. Okay? But generally, the occipital sinus is going to drain into the confluence of sinuses. Now, before we conclude this video, let's take another look at this in another picture. So first of all, here is the superior sagittal sinus going along the superior aspect of the cranium, along the longitudinal fissure. We can see that it's going to drain into the transverse sinus, which is right here. Here's the transverse sinus. And then right here is the sigmoid sinus. And it would be assumed that the sigmoid sinus is going to drain into the internal jugular vein. Here's the inferior sagittal sinus. The inferior sagittal sinus is going to drain into the straight sinus, and then the straight sinus is going to drain into the transverse sinus. Okay. Then we have this occipital sinus, which is also going to drain into the transverse sinus. And this point right here, where the superior sagittal sinus, straight sinus, and occipital sinus all meet at the same point on the transverse sinus, is the confluence of sinuses. Okay. Right here, this is a petrosal sinus. And this is the cavernous sinus. Uh, the cavernous sinus, remember, has a superior petrosal sinus and an inferior petrosal sinus. This one most likely is the superior petrosal sinus because it's going toward the transverse sinus, the distal part of that. Remember that the inferior petrosal sinus actually went down to the very base of the sigmoid sinus and may even drain directly into the internal jugular vein. Okay? But in any case, all of these sinuses are going to indirectly, through all these passageways, drain into the internal jugular vein, which goes to the subclavian vein, and then the brachiocephalic vein, then the superior vena cava, and then the right atrium of the heart. And all these sinuses are really a way for the brain to get rid of the cerebrospinal fluid that's been used. Because remember, it's going to be loaded with wastes and it's going to be depleted of nutrients. So that cerebrospinal fluid can then circulate from the subarachnoid space through the arachnoid granulations into these sinuses. This is just one example. And then they can ultimately go to the internal jugular vein back to the venous system. So hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of the anatomy of the dural venous sinuses and then also how they kind of fit together into the big picture. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.